Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Now, I recently saw an article from Vanity Fair, which I'd like to share with you. That magazine, to me, has always been about fashion, celebrity, makeup tips, you know, entertainment types of things. Nothing too serious. Somehow or another, these entertainment rags are now trying to delve into the real life and the world of politics and cults. Now, why would a magazine like Vanity Fair do that? I mean, technically, magazines in general, especially magazines like this one, are the way that cosmetic, accessory, and designer clothing companies get you to pay them to advertise to you. Tell me I'm wrong. In fact, one of the first pieces of advice people tend to get when trying to eliminate debt or save money or to change their economic situation is to stop buying magazines. Read them online or at the library. But don't get me distracted. Now, of course, you know who is the topic of this article and his followers, of course. And to me, this was just another example of media giving this man way more power than he ever had. So much so as to say that this one man was only worthy of either worship or utter primal disdain. No in-between, no balance whatsoever. Neither of which are very good for the soul. But again, don't get me distracted. Now, I'm going to pull a Tim Pool on you, as they say here in YouTube land, and read you the article as I comment on it. Shall we begin? So many great, educated, functional people were brainwashed. Can Trump's cult of followers be deprogrammed? Now, that particular title right there tells you almost everything you need to know about this article, almost to begin with. So many great, educated, functional people were brainwashed. You could say that about any population at any time, about any situation that happens to go either your way or not. Plus, it also sounds like a very backhanded compliment. Oh man, you are so great, but you were just so bad. Okay call it doublespeak. Can Trump's cult of followers be deprogrammed? Well, if they're so educated and all of that, again, the backhanded compliment is, again, you're so great and you're so educated, but you're just so screwed. And of course, here's another line of projection or conjecture, if you will. As the president's conspiracy theories start to unspool with his departure from office, Cult expert Stephen Hassan, a former Mooney, if you know anything about the Moonies, we maybe can go into it, and the author of The Cult of Trump. So he wrote a book and he was in a cult that makes him an expert. Believes there's hope. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad to hear that from this person I've never heard of before. If the, uh, if the way Americans consume information undergoes a radical change. Okay, what does that mean? Does that mean what they're doing with Twitter and Facebook and what they've done with a uh, sitting president, which is to just essentially censor him? Basically the radical change un that it needs to undergo is not hearing from anybody that they don't want you to start using your mind over? The term cult gets thrown around a lot to describe the intense passion of Donald Trump's followers, but is it accurate? The answer to that question, in my opinion, is no. You'll find in this article as we go on that they're trying to treat 
Trump like Jim Jones, and it just didn't happen. For Stephen Hassan, a former Mooney turned cult expert and author of The Cult of Trump, the answer is decidedly yes, well of course it is, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to sell the book. Trump, he holds, has all the characteristics of a cult leader, and his followers the qualities of a cult, from the all-consuming devotion to a single malignant nar narcissist to the daily consumption of alternative facts to immunize them against cognitive dissonance, aka reality. Boy, he really doesn't know what he's talking about. Not to mention the fact that just because he states that this is what was happening doesn't make it true. It's a frightening prospect to consider millions of Americans being brainwashed by a reality TV celebrity with a now defunct Twitter feed. Okay, first of all, he was way more than just a reality TV star. He was one of the top reality TV stars that was uh, in syndication for how many, how many years? 12 years or something like that? One of the longest running reality TV shows? But not to mention that before he even became a reality TV show host, he was a multi-billionaire and international real estate mogul. You don't think this guy was just an idiot, just pulled him off the street to become a reality TV star, do you? Do you really think that? Oh, and uh, why is his Twitter feed defunct? It didn't have anything to do with him. Though his departure from office has certainly shaken some of his most conspiracy-addled devotees, others are doubling down, insistent that Joe Biden's inauguration is all part of Trump's plan or determined to follow him as he promises to be back in some form. Well, you didn't really just think the guy was just going to go lay down and die somewhere. I mean, you still hear about all the other former presidents in the uh, United States, don't you? Uh, yeah, just because he's not president anymore doesn't mean he's going to lay down and stop breathing. And to be honest with you, I haven't heard of any of these people insisting that this was all a ruse to just let Joe Biden be inaugurated and that he would be back like he was going to be Terminator or something. I mean, what kind of a fantasy life do these people think that other people live in? And certainly not all of them will appreciate the somewhat condescending designation of cult member. You're damn right, because it's not true. You're going to use that against people like us so that give you an excuse to do bad things to us, and that's not cool. The question is whether Trump's followers can be deprogrammed the same way that, say, followers of Mo Sun Young Moon or L. Ron Hubbard have been. Okay, how has that been done? He doesn't tell us how that's been done, but this isn't what they really want to do to us. They're not going to do this understandingly. I've heard many people already si uh, suggest that we need to be rounded up and go to concentration camps or re-education camps, which you know what that means. And this comes from the party of never again. Hassan, the expert, says they can, but, which he just negated what he just said, the process will require not only empathy and individual family involvement, but a wholesale change in how social media and information systems separate fact from dangerous fictions. That's not their job. I would put undue influence or mind control as the number two most important thing that we must address for the planet, he says. He speaks for the entire planet now, okay? Because otherwise, authoritarianism using social media is a threat. Boy, he's not just whistling Dixie there, is he? What follows is an edited transcript of our conversation. An edited transcript. Hmm, can we trust anything that this particular article says now that we know this? Let's read on. Vanity Fair asks, You've written a book that makes the case that if we define a cult correctly, this is in fact a cult. That some of Trump's supporters who we saw at this attempted coup last week have the, have the hallmarks of that. Tell me about how you define a cult and how it is that you see Trump's devotees as a cult. First of all, what happened at the Capitol was not an attempted coup. 
It was a bunch of idiots that were told that they could go in and do a bunch of stupid stuff. Again, it was a fringe faction and it probably wasn't uh, started by Trump supporters. But then again, don't get me distracted. That's not the topic of this uh, video. Stephen Hassan answers, my thoughts about cults is that you can have a cult that's benign or even positive, or you can have a destructive authoritarian cult. If the connotation of cult is bad, then there's no way that that first, that first sentence is true. A, a benign or positive cult? There's no way. A cult is a cult. You can't have one or the other. And of course, like I say, if you have a benign or a positive cult, then how can cult be a negative connotation in that aspect? They need to make up their minds. Another extremely good example of double speak. It is, but it isn't. In the meantime, your mind is going, what? This is defined by four overlapping components that I referred to as the BITE model, B-I-T-E of authoritarian control. The B of BITE stands for behavior control. Then the I is information control. Thought control is the T and the E is emotional control. My definition of an authoritarian cult is these four components are used to change the person into a mirror or clone of the cult that is dependent and obedient. As a mental health professional, we think of that as a dissociative disorder, where the person's real self is still there, it's just suppressed. This new identity is taken over and thought-stopping mechanisms and phobias are instilled in the cult identity to keep it in control. Now, I notice he doesn't give an example of a good or benign cult because there is no such thing. So of course, yes, this would be a cult. First of all, I didn't see anything about the behavior control. President Trump told people that you can vote for him or not. He doesn't really care. He's for everybody, no matter what you want. Uh, I, information control. I don't think he had any control over that ever. The only thing he could do was point fingers and call them fake news. Otherwise, other than that, they were the ones that wouldn't show a lot of his programming. They were the ones that, that uh, took him off Twitter. Information control? And he's talking Trump had information control. I didn't see that. I'm not seeing that now. In fact, where is he? If he has such information control, where is he? The T, thought control. You really think Trump had that kind of control over people? He's sitting there, you will think like I do, or else. That actually sounds like somebody else I know. But I digress. And then of course, the E is the emotional control. Basically, he excited people. He told people that they were good enough, that they were strong enough, and darn it, people liked them. People needed them. So, yeah, if that was the emotional control he had, this guy is way off base. I mean, I'm not even not even halfway through this article, the first question, and he's way off base already. This is crap. Vanity Fair goes on to ask, what would be considered a positive cult? Quick funny story. So, we don't get an actual example. We're going to get a story. Let's see what he says. Many years ago, I was interviewed by a writer of a book who said his editor told him to interview me. I said, what's the book on? He said, computers. I said, that's weird. What's the title? He said, The Cult of Mac. And I laughed. I said, well, I will do the interview, but I need to disclose I've only been using Apple since 1982, and I have five iMacs and four iPhones, etc. I'm in a book called The Cult of Mac. But I also am an avid scuba diver. There are people who are really passionate followers of actors, actresses, rock music. I do believe people can be in all kinds of cultish types of groups where there's high passion, but the key is there's informed consent. Really? Is that what all the advertisements 
in uh, all the television shows and all the magazines and everything like that, that's informed, cons that's consent. I consented to all these commercials being thrown in my face. Yeah. They know what they're getting into. They're allowed to question, they're allowed to talk to critics and former members, and they're allowed to leave without the fear that if they exit, terrible things are going to happen to them. Okay, that's kind of the American way, and the fact that most people don't give a shit who you follow or what you do as long as you're not hurting others or oppressing others. Vanity Fair's next question. The difference between a hobbyist or a passion, what we might simply call a nerd, gets a little squishy. I'm really into collecting records, but I don't consider myself a record cultist per se. Were the Nazis a cult? What one had to do with the other, I have no idea, but the actual question was, were the Nazis a cult? The expert says, yeah! Hitler and the Nazis absolutely were a political cult. In my definition of a destructive cult, the stereotypical profile of cult leaders is malignant narcissism. Wouldn't that mean destructive narcissism or self-destructive narcissism? This is different from leaders of healthier groups where they believe in respecting people's free will and their conscience. This guy's serious. This guy literally thinks that Trump got on TV, had all this control, started mind controlling people with these spirals like they do on the villain films or whatever like that. They take over the, the programming processes and everything like that and literally took away people's rights. Are you serious? I was going to say, it's only been a week and a half into Biden's administration and he's already signed 38 proclamations or executive orders. If that's not ruling with an iron fist, I don't know what is. Because his way of going has gone completely over both of the House's heads. Why are they not quelling him on this? We have three branches of government for a reason. With malignant narcissists, it's all about them. There's no empathy. That's true, but it's not true of Trump. The malignant part is they think that they're above the law. Gee, I know a few congressmen and senators and people that think that. They think nothing of making threats or committing violence. They're also often paranoid. They don't trust anybody. Well, with the way things have been going, if you had somebody on your ass like they've been on Trump's ass, would you trust anybody? I can always, you can always turn these situations back on these people. In my book, in Chapter 3, I compare Donald Trump with Jim Jones and L. Ron Hubbard of Scientology, as well as Sun Myung Moon, the leader of a cult that I was in for two and a half years. Two and a half years he was in a cult, and he's comparing Trump to a cult leader, to Jim Jones. Did you see Trump handing out any Kool-Aid or having people tr uh, travel and follow him all the way to some Southern, South American country? to kill themselves? I swear to God, these people are delusional. And this is probably the reason why they asked him to do this interview. It goes right along with their narrative. And the unfortunate part is this, this guy probably believes all of this absolute crap. Either that or he's just another paid, high paid shill for the establishment. Anything to try and make Trump look bad. So, He's in a cult for two and a half years and he's an expert. Let's read on. Vanity Fair's next question. You've said in the past that Trump is mentally ill. Cult leaders themselves may be deluded or suffering from some mental pathology of some kind. That wasn't a question. But he answers, I would argue that cult leaders typically did not have a healthy childhood. They have what's called an insecure attachment disorder. In Trump's case, we know his father was an authoritarian who used to tell him and his brother things like, you're a killer, you're a king, you're a killer, or you're a king, over and over again. He was raised in a Norman Vincent Peale's church where you're told to believe something 100% and it will magically be delivered by God. And any doubts are viewed as bad. He was trained to do thought stopping from his childhood. 
about any doubts, any negative thoughts, I will generalize and say most cult leaders that I've studied were in a cult themselves previously. It isn't just that the average citizen looks at cult leaders and they go con man or con artist. It's as if they were just criminals and knew exactly what they were doing. Cult leaders are much more dangerous because they have a delusion. They have incorrect wiring operating in their brain for conscience and empathy and reality testing and respect for others as well as respect for rule of law. <laughs> this sounded like gibberish to me. So he says, where I've studied, where in a cult themselves previously. He studied cult leaders, but they said they he noticed that they were in cults previously. What cult was Trump in? He had an overbearing father. A lot of us have had that. Not to mention the fact that I don't remember this guy coming out as an actual psychologist, but he's an expert. He's an expert. Remember that. Vanity Fair asks an important question here of him at this point. Have people objected to this concept of you calling him mentally ill or assessing him that way? You're not a psychiatrist. How do you come to that conclusion scientifically for yourself? Oh, this answer makes him even more of an expert. I am a licensed mental health counselor. That means you had to take a test for the state and probably didn't have to know a whole lot, just had to know enough to pass the test. I have extensive training over the decades by some of the top professionals in the field. So in other words, he's parroting his peers. I'm not doing a clinical diagnosis. Yes, he is. In fact, in the DSM-5 of the American Psychiatric Association, they don't even have a category for malignant narcissism. Yeah, it's not a disorder. It's something that happens. They just have narcissistic personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder and such. I'm making an assessment based on his behavior, what he has said and what has done, very systematically over a long period of time. Oh, so you're an expert on Trump now too then. You've studied his entire life to come up with this. It is interesting that there are psychiatrists, some forensic psychiatrists like Bandy X. Lee, who edited The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, who have stepped into that zone of saying, well, she hasn't seen him in person to evaluate him. But her job as a forensic psychiatrist with an expertise on dangerousness, there's an expertise on dangerousness now. I'm learning something every day is usually based on not seeing the person in person, but based on what they say and what they do. And somebody says I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and kill someone and my followers will still believe in me or follow me. That is a classic statement of someone who is dangerous. He was joking. None of these folks can take a joke anymore. Everything's so serious. Humans need a little levity once in a while. If you keep them on the serious nature and everything like that, yes, they're going to snap. You have to let your emotions out. Good, bad, or indifferent. Now, the way that you let them out is the key, of course. But to stifle everyone's humor, or to stifle anyone's anger, or to stifle anyone's feelings, period, about whatever it is, is a practice in disaster. This is the reason why we're having these riots. People have been ignored and pushed aside for too long. Next question that Vanity Fair asks. When Trump was on Air Force One on his way to Texas, he reportedly was repeatedly saying to people traveling with him, I won the election. I won. It made me think he's unaware of his own pathology. <laughs> Where did they get this information from? Where is your source? on this one. You have no idea what he said. Most people don't. They make it up as they go along and then they expect people to believe them. I, I don't believe you. And even if he did say this, so what? So the, the expert answers, I agree. He's surrounded by enablers who validate him or are fired. That's another feature of a cult persona. They're surrounded by true believers. Again, if anybody says, oops, nope, you lost, they're gone. I want to point out this chanting in his head of I won, I won. 
This is, I believe, from his childhood where he was trained to not allow negative thoughts and keep focusing on the magical thought, which is that he won. This guy explained nothing. That was a non-answer. Vanity Fair says, Another analysis of Trump is that he's a great marketer, a great brander, a celebrity. The definition of a cult is difficult to nail down in some ways. He's not a religious figure, although there are members of his base who see him as in a Masonic light. He's almost like a sports team or a pop star. There's almost a level at which celebrity itself has a cult-like devotional quality to it. Again, they're not just whistling Dixie. Look at the people who follow these movie stars and these, these actors, actresses, and uh, rock stars and, and, and music people and football people. This is how they make their money. If you don't have a following, what's the use of you getting up there and acting and singing? Or anything else for that matter? Mr. Hassan, the expert, answers, I think celebrities do have cult followings. Yes, they do. The question is, are these people deceived or are they being exploited? Is their fundamental personality and belief system being changed? And are they being alienated from family and friends? I guess that depends on who they're following, doesn't it? I really want to emphasize that in my 44 year career, he has to let us know how long he's been doing this. So he, he keeps justifying his expertise. That doesn't sound like anybody that somebody that's very confident to me, does it to you? I've seen that a lot of people think only religious cults. They don't think political cults or they don't think of commercial cults. For example, I believe pimps and traffickers are leaders of commercial cults and that multi-level marketing groups are commercial cults. There are also psychotherapists, even licensed ones. You mean you can be a psychotherapist without being licensed? That can act in authoritarian cultish manner by making their clients completely dependent on them and isolating them from family and friends. Well, that just sounds to me like you're malpracticing or you've become too big for your britches or you think you're more powerful than you actually are. He gives a solution to this, of course. The solution, in my opinion, of course, remember, this guy's an expert, but this is his opinion. To this incredibly intense polarization that we're experiencing is a massive education about the difference between ethical influence and unethical influence. What's ethical hypnosis and what's unethical hypnosis? Uh, why is that a question? This education will help people to be able to assess and discriminate and discern what's true and what's evidence-based and what is disinformation or propaganda or just the hypnotic belief that was installed in their minds at 2 a.m. while they were watching a YouTube video. So in other words, he's just saying that the average person is just that gullible. They have no, nothing in their brain until somebody enters it, something into it. This guy is a kook. Vanity, Vanity Fair then goes on to say, that gets into something else relating to brands and sports teams. There's money involved. There's a whole arm of the media committed to the deceptions of the authoritarian. In this particular case, we're talking about Fox News. Even this morning, there are people on Fox continuing to propagate the election fraud lie. That's a lie. That is a lie. In fact, I just read that the guy that called Arizona too soon, just got fired. So they're lying to you again in this article. Of course, it's all been so far, I haven't seen anything factual. And I'm not even an expert. Actually, the fact that I don't trust anybody, does that make me a dictator? Does that make me some kind of cult leader? I don't trust anybody. I'm paranoid of people like him. He answers. I would like to just comment and say that all destructive cult leaders are after basically three things. And this is stereotype, but power, money, and sex. If it's stereotype, it's stereotype. In other words, this is anecdotal. He really doesn't know what he's talking about. You wouldn't tell you wouldn't preface something like that if that wasn't the case. I would put it in that order. Not every single cult leader that I've studied wants sex, and some do not care about money, but they're all addicted to power. Thank you. Why didn't you say that to begin with? 
but they all have their own propaganda mechanisms or machines. My former cult owns the Washington Times newspaper and has many other media outlets around the world. In the case of Donald Trump, his co-opting of the Republican Party and winning Rupert Murdoch, Murdoch and his empire over, it was financial thing. I believe for Murdoch, I know that he didn't like or trust Donald Trump beforehand. Oh, you do? You've talked to you've talked to Rupert Murdoch, Murdoch personally. You 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 know all of his thoughts on this. But it was, I think, again another conjecture. But it was, I think, he thinks, a very cynical use of him, at the detriment of the public. Part of what I discuss in the Cult of Trump book is the laws that were passed that took away the checks and balances to make sure that media companies were operating for the public good, that they were just entertainment. It's okay to lie as long as we have our advertisers. That needs to change in my opinion. That didn't have anything to do with Trump. That's like, again, another piece of power that they gave him that he absolutely had nothing to deal with. The only thing he did with the media was call him fake. In fact, like I said before, they cut him off. There was th They didn't show a lot of his conferences. They didn't, in fact, they stopped showing his coronavirus conferences because he, his popularity was skyrocketing at the time. They keep telling me that Trump had all of this power, but it's just crap. The interviewer at the Vanity Fair goes on to say, I had forgotten that Mooney's owned the Washington Times. It's ironic that one cult-based organization is supporting another. How ironic. But you also didn't do your uh, research before you uh, interviewed this expert. San goes on to say, I was an expert witness for a House subcommittee investigation into Korean CIA activities in the United States. The Moonies had ties to the Korean CIA. What I later learned was the founder of the KCIA said that he organized and utilized the Moonies as political tools. Of course he's going to say that so that he doesn't get busted for anything else. What's interesting to me is so many Trump believers, see they're not even Trump supporters now, they're Trump believers. They're trying to make this guy out to be like he thinks he's some kind of God and that's just not the case. What's interesting to me is so many Trump believers are critical of the deep state and can cite MKUltra and Operation Mockingbird and Paperclip, which are all valid. Okay, the problem here? I believe that I was involved with MKUltra 2.0, which was basically some people in CIA saying, well, North Korea is brainwashing people, South Korea has had two coups, they're very unstable. We need to find a proxy group to brainwash people in South Korea to keep it stable. After Americans were withdrawing from the Vietnam War, somebody said, let's bring the Moonies to the United States and fight communists on campuses, which is where I got recruited. It's not happenstance. I could also add that Moon was brought from the National Prayer Breakfast, which is operated by a group called The Family that Jeff Charlotte has written brilliantly about. Moon was brought to meet Nixon during Watergate. I, along with several hundred Moonies, were sent to fast on the Capitol steps in 1974 because God wanted Nixon to be president, or so said Moon. Okay, so he went and he fasted and he prayed on the Capitol steps at the behest of his preacher at the time. All right, I don't see that as a bad thing so far. It says, go, he goes on to say, Moon was disappointed that Nixon resigned a couple of days later. The whole mindset of taking over the government, that the government was satanic and that God needs to run the government, that we need to infiltrate Congress and the Senate. That was openly talked about in the leadership meetings when I was in the cult in the 1970s. What we're seeing today is more of this infiltration through a number of different authoritarian cults into world events. It's funny he should mention that. The problem is, is none of them were ever Trump. He was not an authoritarian. If he was, all these media outlets and people like him, we wouldn't be hearing anything from them. He would have, he would have eliminated them by now, like Stalin did, like Mao did, like Hitler did. The Vanity Fair goes on to ask, that's remarkable. In your analysis of cults, there's something called the authentic self versus the false self. 
false self is the adopted cult identity. In this case, we talk about the deep state and the Trumpian alternative reality. Trumpian alternative reality, okay. A whole mythology built around QAnon, which is, I've heard of him, but I still, the only thing that I've ever found on QAnon is that he's a conspiracy theorist. Okay, so what? Tell me a little bit about that. What happens when you become a devotee? Of course, this guy's main purpose of this uh, interview is he's trying to sell a book. So he refers back to his book. He says, in chapter seven of the cult of Trump, I talk about who I think are the main influences manipulating and controlling Trump and directing policy. Well, wait a minute. If he's the dictator, if he's the leader, if he's the one that's narcissistic, he's not listening to anybody else. So this is a contradiction already. This was before I understood the depths of the targeting of Facebook groups, whoop de doo by intelligence operatives of Russia and the Christian right, who I believe we will find out there are connections between these two. Seriously, still on about the Russia. Would you actually take this expert seriously? And when he's still talking about Russia after Biden has already been elected back into office, they're still on about Russia. What does that tell you? Who's the delusional ones? Who are the cults? I don't think so. And I don't know of any Christian left, do you? Targeting specific interest groups, whether the person is anti-abortion or pro-gun or white identity, Jewish, right? Not everyone was like Steve Hassan in the Moonies, where I had a complete radical personality change. So again, doublespeak. These people are being changed, but they aren't like him who had a radical personality change. In other words, these are just normal per people that happened to support our president at the time and happened to like what he did for them. People made more money. Uh, people were able to send their kids more to college. They had, they got more savings for their retirement. They got better jobs. Some of them got jobs period after not working for 12 years. So I would say that a lot of Trump supporters are very much looking at media from that biased sphere. Fox News, Breitbart News, etc. No, actually, if you actually did any studies at all on this, you would know that people like I listen to and watch both. In fact, I'm reading a Vanity Fair article from someone that I absolutely don't agree with whatsoever. And what caught my attention was the word reprogramming. If you know your history, you know that this is not a word that you want to throw around lightly. But I think that once that changes, only a small percentage will be going to the dark web or other media outlets to absorb disinformation. So he deems it as, mis as disinformation. That's another thing. Who gets to decide what's right and what's wrong at this point? You start putting bureaucrats in charge of this stuff, which they already are. You start seeing the kind of stuff that you're starting to see in, in Portland. Am I condoning it? No. Is it happening? Yes. Is somebody doing anything about it? Absolutely not. I'm predicting, now the man can read the future, that the 74 million in terms of real hardcore mind control cultists, I think we're probably looking at 10 to 30 million. I do believe that people don't like to be lied to and they don't like to be exploited. That if we do a massive effort to reach out, connect and educate folks, we can get the majority of people out of this and hopefully inoculated from any other authoritarian cults that may come along. You mean like the one that's in there right now, who signed 37 executive orders in his first week in office? Sounds like a dictator to me. What you're proposing is a tall order, says Vanity Fair. How do we deprogram that many people? The fact that you're even asking that question means that you're a garbage human. Plenty of politicians out there will try to prevent that from happening. You don't have everyone on board. You don't have Fox News on your side or OANN or Newsmax. My question is, does the deprogramming have to be done via their own media networks? Or is it up to us to reprogram these people one at a time on the ground? Neither. 
Again, the fact that you're even speaking about this means you're a garbage human being. Hassan answers, it's going to take more than me, thank God, but I have a lot of knowledge about what works and what doesn't. The most important thing is activating and educating people who don't like Trump to understand that they need to start building bridges back to their family and friends who are into Trump and apologize if they call them nasty names. Just say, I miss you, you're my brother, or I miss you, you're my uncle. Can't we just be in one of those lives? At least at the beginning to restore the memories of the good times before they even knew Trump. I have a whole book called Freedom of Mind, which I wrote to guide my family and friends to help loved ones involved with authoritarian cults. In other words, he's, an, he's now an expert on deprogramming and he's going to come at you and, and, and get with you with all this love and everything like that. Oh, I'm so sorry if I ever called you a name or if ever made you feel bad, please come back to me. The bottom line in my experience is that mind control is not 100%, but getting the person to take a time out from the constant influence that's coming through smartphones and digital media is going to be critical. Yeah, you're going to have to fight Apple and Google and all the rest of these people for that kind of situation too, getting these people off these electronics. Good luck with that. When people have asked me if it's, a, if it's good that Trump was thrown off a of Twitter, Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, I answer emphatically yes, because you're an authoritarian. Because we need to do what's within our control to protect people from this constant reinforcement and indoctrination. He was one guy, one guy against all the rest of this media and news works and everything like that, but he's the one that's brainwashing and that's reinforcing and indoctrinating people. One guy! This guy, again, this guy's a nut. Whoever this person is, whoever this expert is, which we've never heard of until somebody needed to justify re-education or deprogramming people, which is, again, if you know your history, look back into the 1930s and 40s, Germany. This shouldn't even be a topic. And to try and lure people in with love and then smack them with re-education, that's evil. Just plain fucking evil. I'll keep reading if I can. An emphatic yes, because we need to do what's within our control to protect people from this constant reinforcement and indoctrination. Well, then you should be turning off ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CNN. You got one guy. You've silenced one guy. One guy. You've silenced one guy. And some of his followers are some of his uh, supporters, if you will. I don't even think that they're sycophants. I don't think I've ever met a sycophant like that. Not for Trump. Unbelievable. You got 20,000 other stations talking to you one, 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 one way, one way, one way, one way, one way, one way, one way. But Trump was the one that was indoctrinating people. Are you serious? And what's within our control to protect people from this constant reinforcement and indoctrination? Who put you in charge? But the bottom line has to be what's factual, according to whom? There's been an assault for years on truth, on science, on experts, and even on institutions. Something called fourth generation warfare, which is psychological warfare aimed at confusing, disorienting, numbing, delegitimizing leaders and institutions. You think? Again, Perfect example of doublespeak here. He basically says we have to take Trump out because he's 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 indoctrinating people. But there's something now called fourth generation warfare, which is actually doing the exact same thing that he was claiming Trump was trying to do. I don't understand how people can read stuff like this and not see the contradictions unless they just take everything for rote. Nobody thinks anymore. Nobody, nobody, this doesn't smack anybody in the face as, well, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do this too. And they're both going to clash and you're going to have to sit back and just take it. I'll read on. This has been practiced from without by our enemies, as well as from within by the Christian right 
neo-Nazis, and other people with authoritarian goals. Christians do not have authoritarian goals. Now, there have been some that have done things in the name of Christ, and you're going to say, oh, the, the um, Crusades and all this other stuff. Of course, that was 1,400 years ago. Come on. We're talking about right now. Christians actually are being persecuted and killed by the thousands at this moment. So I don't know what he's talking about with this this need for authoritarianism in Christian Christianity. It's bullshit. The cure to fourth generation warfare is outing it and explaining to everybody this is an intentional psychological warfare technique. <laughs> yeah, I don't suppose cutting people off and erasing people has anything to do with that. Vanity Fair's next question. You talk about building bridges back to loved ones, a bridge back to people who may be too far gone into this. Obviously, you don't want to use the word cult with them. How do people react when they're told they're in a cult? As a former Mooney, probably the first line of communication shouldn't be, yes, you're in a cult and we want to get you out. Hassan answers, 100%. And what I've received systematically is attacks that I'm actually the one in the cult, that I'm in the cult of George Soros and the liberals and etc. To which I say, how interesting, really. Educate me. What definition are you using? Oh, okay, so he's the expert. The only definition of anything that can be used is what he says, even though he'll change it whenever it's convenient. The idea is to create alliances, to be respectful, not to be condescending, arrogant, judgmental, and join with them to say, look, I'm a good person. I love America. I want to help. If I'm missing something that you know about, please inform me. When you have that frame, it disarms the black and white, all or nothing indoctrination that I'm the enemy. It also means being a good listener and being able to repeat back to them what their beliefs are, not that you agree with their beliefs, then asking them if they can verbalize your beliefs. Again, it's a matter of, on a very human basis, joining together in a pursuit of what's real and what's going to help. Family and friends are the most powerful agents if they understand what works and what doesn't work, what to do and what not to do. But we need to do other massive things like preventative education in schools. Oh, now he's going to now he's going to project all of this onto our children as well. My son is in high school now and he has a class where they're teaching young people how to discern healthy websites and unhealthy websites. We need to have a much more formalized education in schools. We need to train mental health professionals. We need to train law enforcement. We need to teach media. We need to teach politicians. Who is this we? Who are these angels that's going to just teach everybody how to just be so angelic? Him? Again, he's one guy. And he's basically uh, advocating the dissolution of one guy based on his perception of indoctrination. Like I say, you've got all these websites and you've got all of these mainstream media outlets and everything like that that keep on pushing this one narrative, one narrative. It's in a big, it's a big bubble, a big bubble, a big bubble. But Trump is the indoctrinator. One guy, just one guy. We have to, we have to eliminate Trump and anybody that supports him because they're indoctrinating people. For, we have to get rid of them for the actual indoctrinators. This guy's ridiculous. This, this article is ridiculous. He goes on to say, the internet itself is changing the human species. Because we're spending so much time on the web, our brains are getting influenced by the platforms, by the methodology. The truth is, people need seven to nine hours of sleep to function properly. That's the first thing I've heard him say that actually is true. One of the universal mind control techniques of authoritarian cults is sleep deprivation. Really? Is that what you went through with the moons? I believe the average sleep for Americans is six hours or six point something instead of seven to nine hours, which means that they need more sleep. People need to be in nature and not just sitting inside. Uh, and of course, that's something that everybody spouts out. But what's he going to do about it? Then Vanity Fair goes on to say this. 
About a hundred yards from my house is a family with a Trump sign in their yard. So? They've kept it there even after the election. So? Every time I pass, I feel their antagonism. Seriously, you're projecting what they might possibly, what their sign might possibly mean to you onto you as antagonism. So my question is, so basically you, you've judged them before you even know them because of a sign in their yard and you're going to ask a question based on that. So my question is, how could I possibly approach such people who I don't know that well about this sign? How do you go about deprogramming people you barely know? Why are you making this your business? This is the kind of thing I have a problem with as far as that all of this shit goes. We live in America. We're supposed to be individuals. Why is it that you have put upon yourself to get into everyone else's business? The fact that they have a Trump sign in their yard is none of your business. The fact that they have it there after election is none of your business. So for you to have the hubris to think that you have the right to go in there and try and deprogram these people that you don't even know? How dare you? Like they always said, like everybody's always saying, how dare you? Keep your nose out. And you wonder why people are angry and starting to riot and starting to uh, protest. You wonder why there's troops up in Washington right now. This is it. You're always in people's business and you'll ruin them if they don't agree with everything that you want to live them with. You can't force people to live like you want them to live. Hassan goes on to answer this question. The people who are in the best position to influence in a good way are family and friends who have a longer history with this person. They have a personal arc depending on how estranged they've become. Well, most of them are so estranged, they're not going back. This is, this is a, going to be an exercise in futility. The frame is critical not to buy into the cult frame. How can you believe the election was stolen? You take the frame of, tell me more about why you believe the election is stolen. Because if all the information I'm seeing is wrong, I'd want to correct it. What is it that you've seen that has convinced you, aside from seeing it on TV? What actual evidence do you have access to that would be persuasive? What evidence are you going to have other than TV than this person? So you got the same information that this person has. You believe something different, but you're going to lord over what you believe for them from the same information that they're getting. Again, you're sticking your nose in their business, trying to cajole them into something that you know that you're just going to slam them with later. That's not cool. And if any of my family members ever do this kind of stuff to me, you will never see me again. You're putting the verdict on them to convince you of their position versus you trying to argue them out of theirs. But stay in the truth frame. We just want to know what's really going on. If I've been deceived by the left-wing media, I want to know about it. No, you want to know what you can use against this person at this point. You get them all cuddly with you and say, Oh, I understand. Please tell me how you feel. And you'll use it against them. I guarantee it. You're going to do the exact same thing that you keep claiming everyone else is going to do. Of course, Vanity Fair asks the question, If they're not a family member, should I engage directly? And of course, he's going to say, You can. I would start with a smile and an offer to buy them a coffee. It comes down to who was this person before they were a Trumper probably the same as they are now. I've encountered so many great educated functional people who were brainwashed. So the issue is how to get them back to who they were before they got sucked into this rabbit hole. Brainwashed. They're good people, but they were brainwashed. They're smart, but they were brainwashed. Well, if they were so smart, how in the world were they brainwashed? You're a smart person. How did you get brainwashed? You were in the Moonies. You never describe any of that. With Trumpers, what I've been, had the most success with is talking about Chinese communist brainwashing and about traffickers and pimps and how they use brainwashing on victims by giving them the B-I-T-E B -I -T -E model. You're giving them a frame to step back and look at what they're into. And the assumption is that deep down inside, people want to know the truth. No, they don't. If you're not taught how to think, they don't want to know the truth. You can't permeate that anymore. You can't permeate that. 
Oh, this is great. Let's see it. Let's see how big of an expert he is on this. Vanity Fair asks him, have you personally deprogrammed a Trump follower? He answers, I work with family and friends. I've only been hired once by a man whose wife got into QAnon and she met with me. She likes me. We covered a lot of ground. I focused on building their relationship as a couple because they have young kids. They got recruited by the same people who do the epic, who do the epic times. She agreed to stop going to all the sites and she said, I will know whether or not QAnon is BS when Trump is in his second term. I'm waiting until Wednesday to contact her. So now he's a couples therapist. This guy is a fraud. He's a jack of all whatevers. Again, he hasn't said anything about his experience whatsoever, except for the fact that he's had it and that he's become an expert on it, but he's projected all kinds of bullshit on everybody else. While claiming that anybody can be deprogrammed, just go up and do it. I'm sorry, but you don't need to be in pe this is I think the problem that people are having you're up in people's businesses you're telling people how to think what to do what to say and what they can and can't listen to I don't appreciate that kind of thing I don't need anyone's help when it comes to that I don't want anyone's help when it comes to that I become very angry when someone hides things from me truth or not I wonder what that conversation was like. Vanity Fair goes on to ask, I wonder what vacuum this stuff has filled. What made these people so susceptible to these messages? Is it that Trump came along and offered an alternative reality that created order where there had evidently not been order for people? A sense of like, you're bored at home, you've lost your job, you're feeling empty, and here's an entire fulfillment system. It's got a leader and you can just follow all the percepts and you're set. Well, I was going to say, he created more jobs, which is not a bad thing. He brought back a whole lot of industry to the United States, which is not a bad thing. We actually started getting more higher quality gypsum and steel again, which China was just dumping their junk on us. We came up with a way better um, system in between the three, in between the three uh, countries in the continent here, the Mexico... American and Canada agreement, which was much better than NAFTA, which just sent all our jobs to everywhere else. He made us independent on energy, which is actually not a bad thing. Nobody can take that away from us if we're independent on energy. So I don't know about you, but I don't think that, you know, this entire, entire fulfillment system, it was, yeah, you can get a job and support your family again. I'm going to bring your taxes down. I'm going to bring your prescription drugs down. I'm going to bring hope to poor people that have illnesses. But he was a cult. He was a bad cult too. I don't understand this. No, these people are just haters, period. They have no sense of anything but what they think, period. There's no counters. There's no anything. You're just a bad person if you liked or did anything having to do with Trump, even if you just voted for him. Now, I'm not one of these people that you call, a, 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 you know, these fangirls. That, I've never been to one of his assemblies. I paid attention to what he said when he was on conferences. I paid attention to the laws and the bills and the things that he did and he passed. I paid attention to how he spoke to his constituents. Everybody says, oh, he was mean and nasty. Well, he wasn't mean and nasty to the people that actually counted, which were the people he was trying to take care of, which was the American people. He was mean and nasty to people like Pelosi and Schumer, these elites that think that they know better than everybody else, that they think that they've been in office for so long that they know what's good for us and we should just shut up and listen to them. In the meantime, we're starving, destitute, and a lot of us don't have insurance anymore. Can't get medical coverage. That doesn't have anything to do with Trump. He was one man who had actually three, he was one of part of three government branches. 
And all these people gave him so much power over it, all of this stuff, even the fact that they're calling him a cult leader. How much power do you think this guy actually had? Are you literally that superstitious to give this man enough power to where he would just lift his hand up and say, do this, and everybody would just do this? It's bullshit. It always has been bullshit. In fact, they're thinking the same thing in Biden now. He's just going to lift his hand and make everything all better. Well, guess what? He's lifted his pen 37 times and it ain't happening. I don't know if I want to go on with this, this article. It just gets worse and worse when it comes back, when it comes down to it. This guy is a kook. He's a kook. And he's saying exactly the opposite of what actually is going on. Hassan goes on to say, I would argue, as I did in the Cult of Trump book, I notice he's mentioned his book by name several times. This man is trying to sell a book. That ever since Edward Bernays wrote his 1928 book, Propaganda, he was the nephew of Freud. He was the first to connect psychology with business and politics. There has been an increasing attention with advertisers, with corporations, with governments in understanding how to manipulate human consciousness. Yes, the advertisers have been doing that for eons. In the 50s is when they discovered that you catch, you, you, you advertise and get a hold of the youngsters, they'll be customers for life. And so were their children, and so were their children's children. So that's, psh, that's old news. It's one thing to say, how do we get people to buy something they don't even need? What are the principles of influence that will work? We'll have the sexy woman or the handsome sexy guy, or we'll have the celebrity person. There are also many, there are hundreds of influence techniques that are not known. I'm sure there are. Trump is a symptom of decades of systematic breakdown of laws and checks and balances and the increasing sophistication of how to manipulate people in large groups. One thing that needs to happen, and I don't know if it will, but the intelligence agencies need to make some type of public statement that yes, people can be radicalized. Again, not their job. The intelligence community is there to protect our rights, to protect us from form and domestic problems, not to make public statements. In fact, we're not even supposed to know the intelligence committee or the intelligence agencies exist. That's the whole purpose of them being called that in the first place. Good people can be made into killers and we know how to do it. And here it is. This is the system. You actually think the CIA or the intelligence communities are going to come out and tell the public that this is what they're doing? This guy is insane. Because it's not magical. If we don't educate everybody about these techniques, the people who know the techniques are going to have an unfair advantage over all the people who don't know the techniques. <laughs> Another one. Good luck with that. Kennedy Fair asks Hassan, I'm sure... You've seen it. This BBC documentarian made an entire movie about Bernays. Adam Curtis, Sensory of the Self. That's right. Excellent film. What I want to emphasize is we're in a desperate situation as a planet and as a species. Seriously? We're in a desperate situation? How so? We need to think of survival as mutual survival. Why? Because you said so? Because we now understand if a nuclear reactor floods, as it did during the tsunami of J in Japan, which they haven't done shit about since, it's still leaking into the Pacific, all of that contamination goes into the ocean and comes into the United States. When the pandemic appears in one location, it's going to go everywhere. No shit, Sherlock. This idea that we need to be isolated and care only about us is detrimental to the survival of our species and the planet because the global climate crisis is real. That's a topic for another video. I'll move on. We can't allow the fossil fuel countries to, and individuals to perpetrate disinformation that climate change is a hoax because it's not a hoax, it's science says the cult expert. This is a grave existential danger to the planet. I would put undue influence or mind control as the number two most important thing that we address for the planet because otherwise authoritarianism using AI, using social media is a threat. I agree, but not for the reason why he said. 
It's because of the fact that they are silencing one man, not the entire social media or media complex, if you will. This guy's got it backwards, but he's trying to double speak us into believing that we're in some kind of a cult because we love our country and we uh, admired someone that got up and stood up for us against idiots like this. Vanity Fair. Let's talk about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who are about to be inaugurated. Trump, we assume, we hope, will be marginalized. His voice will be diminished in the public sphere. How much do you think that change will diminish and possibly disinter some people from this cultish devotion to Trump? Why do they call it cultish devotion to Trump? Why? In fact, a lot of people, they're comparing it to movie stars and uh, singers and all this other stuff. Why is he different? Why? Because they hate him. Son answers, I think it's going to be huge. I think there's a lot of Americans who believe in supporting the office of the president. The fact that Joe Biden has been around and worked in, bi in a bipartisan way, I think will be a positive. But the attacks on them are going to escalate. The enemies of democracy will keep going as much as we will allow them to. We need people of integrity, people who love America, people who are willing to put country first and not party to be speaking up. It ain't Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that's for damn sure. We know that now. Then he goes on for his, uh, to tell us about his, his, his experience with this, his, his expertise experience with this. I was a part of a documentary that is still not completed, but put together by Melissa Jo Pelleter. She has interviewed Joe Walsh and David Weissman, and so many former Trumpers who are bright and articulate. We need to amplify the voices of former Trumpers. We need to get Christian ministers who actually believe in the Bible and actually believe in Jesus and Jesus' message. Again, these people floor me with this shit. We need to amplify their voices because in my opinion, the media has really done a disservice by continuing to call Trump's base Christian evangelicals. The Christian evangelicals I know say that those folks are Minionist or Christian nationalist or prosperity ministers or con artists and not following the Bible and not following Jesus. Again, how would they know? Do they ever go to these people's churches or do they just listen to what jerks like this say? Not that I really care, but he said he goes on to say, I really think we have to get back to some basics like don't do to others what you don't want done to you basic morality. Gee, I've been saying that since day one. I believe people who are former cult members like myself, our voices, former neo-Nazis, former people who are in these new apostolistic reformation churches that are authoritarian, their voices need to be amplified and normalized. A group of my friends and colleagues are attempting a hashtag movement called I Go Out to attempt to copy the Me Too success. Oh yeah, Me Too was a real success. Just ask Tara Reid. Where if we can destigmatize the fact that we were in an authoritarian cult and life goes on after leaving it, it can create a bigger exit ramp for people who've been caught up in the cult of Trump. Delegitimize the fact that we were in an authoritarian cult. Think about that for a minute. So you call Trump's era, his minuscule four years in office, a cult, and you're gonna delegitimize that. Tell me, tell me how you think people are gonna react to that. You really think people are gonna start saying, oh, you're just so right. You love me so much and I'm just so into you guys. How cultish would that be? This is the exact opposite of what you want people to be doing. I just, mm. and you know, you, you need to create a pathway for these people out of this thing that you think is a problem. Again, who put you in charge? The reporter at Vanity Fair says, I follow David Weissman on Twitter and he's talked a lot about his escape from the Trump cult. 
Hassan answers, we need more people courageously speaking up in a coherent message. But again, what's missing is the bigger fame. People don't understand how to discern authoritarianism cults from non-authoritarian cults, which I'm hoping my models and all my hard work over the 44 years will help with. Uh, I doubt it. Seriously doubt it. You go in calling people cult members, you cajole them in, oh, I'm your family member, I love you, I just want to know your side of the story, and then you attack them with it. You're just getting information to be able to use against them. It's, it's horrible. This is ridiculous. And deprogramming is not a word you should be using with this. It's, it's condescending and it's wrong. Not to mention the way that you're trying to get it through us, through to us is all this double speak. It is, but it isn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. No, no, just no. And of course, how is it that how is it that all of a sudden we need to be listening to people that have already been reformed? Uh, you know, a, up until this particular point in time, there was no reformation. You couldn't apologize for this kind of stuff. You were just canceled. So basically, you're asking to talk to people. You're asking people to listen to people that actually have been deprogrammed. You've gone through all of these things with them, and they're all of a sudden, oh, I was in such a I was such a bad person. Oh, and everything like that. No. No. I reject this. Vanity Fair goes on to ask or say, It seems like the next year or two will be spent doing the hard work of creating guardrails in our information system for distinguishing fact from fiction. They've been doing that ever since Trump entered office. If you haven't seen the fact checks, then <laughs> you've been, you're blind. So they're not going to just start doing this. They've already been doing this. And the fact that they cut off the president while he was still sitting president should tell you that. Hassan answers, I would just add that part of the problem, in my opinion, in the United States is the unique inequities between the uber rich and the average citizen. Really? Who are the uber rich? The breaking down of the checks and balances put on politics. When the Supreme Court affirmed Citizens United, which also opened the doors to all kinds of Americans being fronts for foreign governments to pour money into certain politicians to do their bidding. I think we need to get rid of Citizens United. I think we should have set, have a set amount of money for every politician running for an office. Clean up in a very big way. Money is the great enabler of a political cult leader in this particular environment. Yeah, on both sides. I want to be clear. I hear from Trumpers saying, what about the left? Don't they have cults too? I'm like, yes, they do. I'm against authoritarianism on the left or the right. I'm a human rights guy. I'm a mental health professional who wants people to live fulfilling lives. Well, getting in their business and telling them that they're cult members and that they don't have any right to their own opinions or their own feelings or anything like that is not the way to fulfill people's lives. Again, you might be an expert, but you're not an authority on the way people are supposed to live. And you're not in charge of anyone else's opinions. You shouldn't be in charge of anyone else's speech. This article was absolutely abhorrent in my opinion. And whoever this Hassan person is, is nuts. He has to be. He must be. He's, he's an expert in everything like that now. But if he was in the Moonies to begin with, then there was a problem there. And he, he's, trying to do this, he's trying to do the same things with anybody else that's actually reformed themselves. The only problem with this reformation of his is it's wrong. You can't just deprogram people. They have to make these decisions for themselves. It's just like an alcohol addict or any other addict. They have to make these decisions for themselves. But it's not your place or the government's place or anybody else's place to tell people how to think what to do. You talk about authoritarianism? Well, guess who sounds like an authoritarian? You do, my friend. As a side note, just to give you an idea just how Trump deranged Vanity Fair has become, here's the more great stories from Vanity Fair. Jared and Ivanka's final chapter in Washington demolished their future. After a day of violence, Trump's allies are jumping ship. 
the unbearable whiteness of storming the Capitol. Gary Cohn is a test case for trying to wash off the Trump stink. The deeply unsettling, not entirely surprising images of Trump's Capitol Hill mob. Boy, they're really trying to push this, aren't they? Vanity Fair, like I said, used to be a fashion, makeup, uh, and celebrity magazine. Here's another one. Twitter finally muzzles Trump. Is too little too late? The eerie Charlottesville echoes of Trump supporters' capital coup. From the archive, inside the cult of Trump, his rallies are church and he is the gospel. Not a subscriber? No, and I never will be. I do hope you enjoyed me reading this article to you and commenting on it. These are all my opinions. I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like to continue to see my work, please make sure that you support me by sharing, subscribing, uh, liking, and of course, a donation would be the ultimate. Don't forget to click the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my work. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.